Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 12 of my audio adventures. I am your host, Timothy Adon. Now, last episode, I talked about creativity. Um, that kind of cut in the middle of the of the series that I was doing about all the things that you need for recording and doing music. So, in the last uh, episode of that series, I talked about digital audio workstations. Um, so, this time, I'm going to talk about all the other little things that you either need or should have um, in the future. And... Uh, first, I'm just going to, you know, help you total up the approximate cost of what everything else is going to cost you. Um, I didn't add in the computer because, in theory, you probably already have a computer, regardless of whether or not it's good. Um, and seriously, like, computers are expensive, so don't, if you, if you have one already, don't worry about how good it is. Just get one, or just, just have it, and, uh, you know, as long as it can run the software you're fine. You might run into some issues, but aside from that, you'll be fine. Um, so, for a digital audio workstation, you're looking at, uh, for the one that I bought, it was $500. Um, other digital audio workstations are cheaper. Other ones are more expensive. It entirely depends on which one you go for, but for now, we're just going to stick with the $500 one. Um, the M-Audio Fast Track Pro, which is what I use, is no longer available, but when it was available, it was $300. So, that brings it up to $700. Um, however, the alternatives that Sweetwater is recommending are all cheaper than the one that I bought. I'm not sure if I should feel ripped off or not. <laughs> um, so, that is the audio interface. Um, that is the uh, s s recording software. And then you just need a computer, which hopefully you'll already have one. And if not, then you'll just have to get yourself one. Um, remember... A good computer isn't necessary, it's just really nice to have. And now next up, I'm going to talk about headphones. Headphones uh, or studio monitors, which are the other option. Um, you're, you're going to need one set of either of these. Um, I would probably suggest headphones. They're cheaper and they're portable. You can take, you can take them with you and you can use them for anything else. Um, you know, I use mine both for studio recording and for gaming, so it, w it works out. Um, I got my, this. these are actually the uh, headphones that I have. Um, I got these as part of a package, which I don't know if they still sell that package. I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. Um, so you need to get yourself a set of headphones or a set of studio monitors in order to be able to listen to the things that you're working on. So, the headphones that I have are $100. The studio monitors, well, you have to buy them uh, in pairs, and they usually sell them individually. So, like, the KRK Rocket 5, which, by the way, the KRKs are supposedly incredibly good for their price, um, are $150 each. So, in order to have a stereo pair, like you should have, uh, it's going to cost you $300. So, you know, it's it studio monitors can be very pricey. The studio monitors I have, which are Ion ISP 02s are <laughs> are very very cheap that I got off of eBay. Like I don't I got them and I used them a little bit and then I stopped using them in favor of my headphones. Um because my headphones just are good. My headphones are really good. I use the, I use my um uh, my studio monitors towards the end of any project I'm working on. Um, so let's just say you get the headphones. Headphones are going to cost you $100. So we're looking at $800 so far. And by the way, I'm not doing the price to try and scare you away. Yes, everything is going to be expensive, but you can try and do it piecemeal. Um, if you have a pair of really crappy headphones, go ahead and use them. Um, you know, these these things can be incredibly expensive, and getting them secondhand is totally okay. Um, if if it means that you can at least get the work done, doesn't matter if if it ends up working well for you. It just matters that you're able to get work done. Um, so that was 
headphones and studio monitors. Um, again, you're just going to want to make sure that uh, any headphones or studio monitors you get have a even frequency response, as even as you can get anyways. I mean, obviously, secondhand equipment notwithstanding. Um, because, you know, you need the even frequency response in order to uh, mix your music well. Um, and on the same vein, that's actually kind of why I use headphones. Uh, headphones puts the sound directly into your ear and cuts out the vast majority of the background noise, whereas studio monitors will uh, be will uh, give you sound, but it'll also echo around in the room that you're in, which will then change your perception of the sound. Which, if you're in an actual studio, isn't really going to matter much because your studio is going to be built around that anyways. But if you're in a bedroom like I am, then headphones are probably going to work out a bit better. Keyboards. This is starting to get into the realm of the not necessary. Um, I have a, a Casio WK-110, I think. Yeah, um, and it's a pretty nice li like home keyboard. It's I got it for Christmas one year, and I played around with it a little bit. I didn't know how to play keyboard then. I don't know how to play keyboard now. Um, but I've been I've been slowly teaching myself because of all the stuff that I've been using it for for recording. Um, so I played around with it for a little while, and this was long before I started. Uh, before I decided that I wanted to be a composer and before I got any of my recording equipment. So I wasn't worried about plugging it into my computer. And when it finally came down to it, I decided that I wanted to use my keyboard as a uh, MIDI control surface. A MIDI control surface is how you input notes externally without plugging it in with your mouse and, uh, with your mouse, and mouse buttons. Um, and it basically means you hit a key, and that MIDI note gets recorded into your software, and then it'll play whatever that uh, track is attached to for an instrument. Um, if you saw my cre my last creativity video, you'll uh, you'll see a prime example of that. Um, so a keyboard's not necessary because you can just point and click uh, your recording uh, for MIDI notes. But I would recommend eventually getting a keyboard. Because especially if you do know how to play, then it'll make inputting notes incredibly easy. It'll make it so super fast. Um, you have no idea. If you don't know how to play keyboard like me, you're probably not going to need one. But even somebody that doesn't know how to play keyboard like me um, will have an easier time inputting notes. Especially if they start off and uh, with their idea on the keyboard. Which is another reason to get it, because if you have a keyboard, then you can just kind of sit there and doodle, and then you'll eventually get an idea that you might like. Um, which you can then record <laughs> on your keyboard into your software. So, these are the keyboards. Um, the uh, Casio, let's see, Casio WK225, which is a obviously an updated version of what I got, um, is $200. So let's just say you're going to get a $200 keyboard. Um, so there is a $100 one if you want to try that. I would probably go for the $200 one just for the little bit of added functionality. Um, but then again, if you're using it as a uh, control surface, you probably don't need a good keyboard. Um, however, there are actually uh, specifically... Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. Uh, keyboard controllers and keyboard controllers are like keyboards but they don't have sound they don't have their own sound to play with and they are basically specifically for entering MIDI commands and that can be pretty useful if you don't care about having a keyboard with sound on it um, and in the end that actually makes these relatively cheap some of them uh, act as little mixing boards as well so you can uh, tie the various mixing channel or mixing dials and knobs uh, into your software so that they can actually have some 
live functionality, do live EQ changes or fader changes. Um, and these can also be really cheap and they can also be really expensive. It entirely depends on how much functionality they decided to put into those. Um, but for now, let's just pretend they're $200. So now you were looking at $800 before for things that you needed. So in the vein of things that you don't need, you are now looking at $1,000. And then the other thing that's in the vein of something that you don't need but really should have is a microphone. The microphone that I am currently using is an Audio-Technica AT2020. That is what I'm talking into at the moment um, for $100. It is a nice, smooth microphone, um, condenser microphone, so it needs phantom power, which, by the way, if you do get a condenser microphone, make sure that your audio interface uh, has phantom power on it. And make sure that you check to see what the voltage on the phantom power is, and then the, volt and then the voltage requirement on any condenser mics that you get, and make sure that they match up. Um, because if you have too little phantom power, then your mic will work, but it might not work well enough, and it entirely depends. It might work perfectly fine and it won't matter, or it might, like, be fuzzy and weird. Um, and you, and if you have too much phantom power, I really don't think there's an issue with too much phantom power, but I have read posts that, um, if you plug in a mic, like a, a dynamic mic, that doesn't require any power into something that is providing phantom power, then if you leave it in there for too long, it might fry. I don't know how true that is, but it's something to think about. Um, and then obviously you're gonna want mic stands. Um, some of them can obviously get incredibly expensive and some of them can get ungodly cheap and dumb like the mic stand I'm using. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend at least one mic. Um, I have three, uh, two of which I got off of Sweetwater, and one of which I got off of uh, eBay. Um, and I'm primarily I primarily use the AT2020 for my voice. I might like switch it around just to see what I sound like. So plus one hundred. So in total, um, everything that you need plus the things that you should have um, are going to cost you about eleven hundred dollars that's not that's not counting the studio monitors um, I will tell you that you should get studio monitors but I am not going to be a hypocrite about it because I don't have good stu studio monitors either <laughs> and I know eleven hundred dollars is a lot but I and I don't want to scare you away um, but again you can kind of do this piecemeal and start with just the audio interface and headphones um, and software and again there's free software and there are cheaper alternatives to all the things that I showed you um, but it, at some point you're gonna want to start moving up uh, towards the more expensive end of the spectrum so um, I would love to I would love to show you more but I am out of time so thank you for watching this video I hope that uh, this series of four videos has been educational for you um, I plan on starting a couple different, uh, other series, um, one of which is probably going to be gameplay videos for fun, um, and another one is going to be about local musicians and activities in the New England area, as well as probably New York area, maybe. Um, and, yeah, so thanks for watching, um, and I will talk to you again later. Have a great day.